Hi there and welcome back to the Project Corner. Today I'm going to look at three improvements on the risk matrix that I created a while back. And Power BI has a monthly increase in functionality. And there are three things that are interesting to have a look at in combination with that risk matrix. So first thing that we do is we head on over to the OneDrive that I share with the uh, newsletter followers. If you're not a follower yet, there's a link in the show note and you get access to the 22 files that are already in here. So once you're there, click on the riskmatrix.zip and uh, download that uh, for your own use. Once you do that, you get a package of four files. You get the two uh, grids, you get the Power BI package, and you get the new measures and queries. But that's all explained in the previous videos. If you double click on the content pack with risk matrix, you'll receive this file. I'm not going to apply the changes because I don't have it hooked up to a project online environment at the moment. But for your own environment, you would go into the uh, transform data and you would create a link to your own project online environment. So for now, let's remove the apply changes bar here and it's going to pop up a couple of times again. So first thing that I want to do in this uh, file is I want to update the visual headers. So why do I want to do that? Is it gives me a bit more real estate. In the previous versions of Power BI, you would have this thick bar on top and you wouldn't be able to use the full canvas in your uh, visualizations. And for the risk matrix, it's very annoying because every little card has one of those um, little menus. So removing that is quite simple. Make sure you have the last version of Power BI. That's, that's number one. Then you'll head over to Files, Options and Settings. Click on Options. And from there, go down and click on the report settings and here there is a visualization option use the modern visual header with updated styling options that's the one that we're going to use and we're going to click on ok here's that yellow bar again but when i remove it you'll see that uh, it now uses the complete canvas for our visualization and for a risk matrix, you now see that it actually includes the option to have that card as a full visual right in the center of that square. So let me do that for all of these as well. And I'll fast forward this um, so not to bore you too much. So that's it. Now every little number is dead in the center of that risk matrix square. That's very good. Now when I was looking at this file, I noticed that there is a error in one of these cards. So you want to go into this card and you'll see that it has a grid 1-5. Well that's actually this one. So that is incorrect. So let's correct that right now. And there you go. Oh, I should have applied the change, applied the filter. And there you go. So with that modern visual header, you have more real estate and you're more accurately portraying where that visual is going to look. Um, and you have the option to use the top layer of the um, of the canvas as well because then the header is going to appear down below the visual instead of up. So for the next thing that I wanted to share with you, I'm actually going to publish this uh, report to my workspace because for this improvement, you'll need to see the report in a online scenario. So I'll select my workspace and I'll click on replace. So once that has been published, I'll click on open content pack with risk matrix in Power BI and I'll sign in. 
So for this next update, I need you to have a close look on what happens if I navigate my mouse over these icons or these cards. And what you see happening is that every one of those icons or cards, every one of those, you'll see that every card has that little pin and that little copy this visual. I don't want to have that for each and every individual um, visualization. And I don't even want to have that for this visualization, for instance, where it also shows up. And this one might be interesting because I can do a drill down and a drill up and navigate through the different layers of that visualization. Same goes for this one. I might want to have this to, to export it data or to put it in the spotlight or do any kind of crazy stuff with it. But I don't want to do that for every little visualization here or for the image visualization because that shows up right here, right in between the project filter. How annoying. So how will we go about improving the um, content pack with risk matrix? How are we going to hide that little menu popping up for every visualization? Well, to do that, you'll select every card here and I'll speed this up again. And once you've selected every one of those, you'll go into visualizations. You'll click on that little format icon here and you'll remove the visual header. It's the last one on the line. And on the desktop, it doesn't look like anything has changed. But when I publish this, it will actually remove that visual header uh, from the visualization. And I'm going to do that for this visual as well, as well as the top level uh, visualizations. Visual header, visual header. And for these filters, you're able to select them all and click on the visual header. So let me publish that again, and you'll be able to see what that did to our little report. So again, this is going into the My Workspace, and I'm going to replace, and I'm going to replace the current file there. So once that has been published, I'll click on Got It, and I'll refresh this page. And now when I hover over any of these values, I don't see anything change. Uh, I don't see this annoying menu popping up uh, and also not for the visuals within the risk matrix. So it's very nice, very clean, and it still shows up with the value if I hover over it, but it doesn't have that menu that hinders me from viewing the actual visuals. So for the last improvement, I wanted to credit Ketan for uh, bringing my attention to this. Uh, can you share your thoughts on best practices to reusing the heat map or deploying the heat map in multiple reports? That got me thinking about a very nice new improvement within Power BI. The risk matrix actually contains 26 separate visuals. And that's not easy to uh, to reuse that in different parts in the report or copy pasting that to another report in total. But luckily, Power BI currently has the option to group values. So let me select them all. There is a new group feature in formats. It helps you group the complete uh, visual and it even retains the, the location compared to the other visuals in that group. Looking at the view and then the selection pane, you'll even see a group and we can rename that group being the risk matrix. And in that you will have all those cards and you can rename those cards, but I don't see an actual value there. So now that I have this group, I can move the whole group and every card in there is moved with it. And better yet, if I resize the group, the numbers stick to their uh, relative to their relative square. So that is a very nifty way of combining that risk matrix into one visual. 
And it also gives you the option to copy that group and place that anywhere else within your report very easily. Control C and then now Control V and I have that same visual now at a different location without having to select all those 26 different visuals. And looking at the selection pane here, I again see that I have the risk matrix as a whole selected. So those were three improvements on the risk matrix based on new functionality within Power BI. I might do a follow-up again in two years um, because I can hardly believe that Power BI will be the same application in two years from now. So the file that I've used today will also be available in the uh, newsletter followers OneDrive folder. Once again, that folder can be accessed once you are a member of the newsletter and you will be able to find it by looking for the risk matrix 2020. So thanks for listening in. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button and click that like button. It helps the channel a lot and I'll see you again in two weeks.